As I promised a very long time ago, it's finally time to add upgrades to Indie Mill. Those will be just totally random things that I thought about that I think will be useful for me. I know there is plenty of other things that you can add to a CNC machine and I would like to see your ideas in the comments. Maybe I will add some of them in the future. All the parts, things and files that I use to add those upgrades and to use Indie Mill, you can find a link to all of that in the description. I decided to drill those holes in the wasteboard with Indie Mill because it's easier, it's more precise and it's actually quite fast to do. So I had to leave the machine a little bit in order not to drill in the table that is below the CNC machine. I used for that pieces of MDF and it works fine. I know the stick out of the tool was kind of big but actually I done it on purpose because I wanted to drill all the way through the table and this MDF is 20 mm thick uh, so I needed this longer tool for that. It took me about 10 minutes to machine the whole thing and after that I just took it off the CNC machine and marked all the other holes that I wanted to have on this wasteboard but those holes weren't reachable with the CNC machine and I drilled them with a drill. Now it's time to grab all the nuts, put them in proper holes of course on the other side of the table and hammer them with a hammer. This is a very simple and easy to add upgrade to any CNC machine and I think it's totally worth it, especially if you have clamps. Clamps that I will design later. I never really considered limit switches to be a very important and useful upgrade, that's why I never added them uh, to Dremel CNC, but right now after playing with CNC machines for quite some time, I can see why limit switches are very useful for CNC machining. Not only uh, you have the reference point when something goes wrong and you want to start milling again, with the same material already installed on the CNC machine, you have this nice zero zero reference point. You can also easily machine the same thing a lot of times because you can put the material in the same place and you have this zero zero reference point. It's very useful to have that. I use them as normal open switches. So I soldered cables to common and NO, which means normal open. The hardest part was putting all the cables for the cable chain as I already have quite a lot of cables in here. To attach those micro switches I designed a universal 3D printed holder that works for all axes and can be attached to a linear rail. That's I think a very useful thing so that you can easily attach it to the same place on each axis and the design itself is actually the same for every axis so just need to print one file three times. Easy to follow right? Limit switches were connected to screw terminal on indie shield labeled end stops. There is X, Y and Z. If you are using different controller, it should be labeled very similarly to that. There also was one problem. At some point of developing the GRBL, they decided to swap the Z axis end stop with spindle enable in order to access the PWM, the hardware PWM on the Arduino. And because of that, it is wrongly labeled on the indie shield itself. Of course, that's my mistake. But fortunately it's easy to fix that. An easy workaround is to connect Z-axis limit switch to spindle enable screw terminal on Indie Shield. And if you want to control spindle, you should connect it to the Z-axis screw terminal. That for sure will be fixed in Indie Shield version 2. You also need to configure the GRBL in order to use those limit switches. You need to send two commands. The first one is to actually enable the homing cycle 
And the second one, you need to configure that depending on where you placed your limit switches. Everything is explained very well in the links in the description. If you want to home the machine, use the dollar big H command. And what can I say? It works great. I already made a video on how to make your own Z probe for a CNC machine, and I used this Z probe on Dremel CNC. And I will use exactly the same setup, actually the same Z probe for IndyMill. If you need more info on how to make and set up your own Z axis probe, check out this video. Yet another cable added to cable chains. Connected to probe screw terminal on IntiShield. Thanks to the connector, I can easily plug and unplug the probe. And once again, machining is simplified a bit. Safety switch. It is a really, really important upgrade. And as I noticed while making this video, it is a very useful upgrade, especially when you are trying to debug the limit switches. There is a lot of theories on how to connect a safety switch. Should it reset the Arduino? Should it cut off the power for the wall system? Or should it only cut off power for stepper motor drivers? I decided to go with the last one and I will actually cut off the power for the stepper motor drivers. GND of the power supply is connected to the safety switch normal close connector. That means when you press it, you open the circuit and there is no voltage for the stepper motor drivers, so stepper motors cannot move. And that's basically how you implement safety in your CNC machine. Of course, there is other safety considerations like shutting off the spindle and stuff like this. But as for now, I think the stepper drivers um, it's like the most important thing. You can stop the machine if something goes wrong. Uh, if your hand accidentally happens to be in like wrong place, you can shut off the machine. Uh, if you see that you will break a milling bit in a second, you can turn it off. If you see that limit switches are not working as they should, you can turn off the stepper motors and that's great. That's a really simple, very important, very, very important upgrade to a CNC machine that everyone should add. Safety is number one priority. This one is actually quite funny because I was looking for cables in order to connect limit switches to IndyMill and I noticed a piece of LED strip and I thought there is the x-axis gantry, there is quite a lot of space on the bottom, maybe I will be able to put right there this LED strip. And it turns out on the aluminum profile on the bottom there is actually perfect amount of space to stick the LED strip right there, so I did that. One cable went through the cable chain again to the power supply to the 12 volts because those LED strips are usually powered with 12 volts. And we have another really nice upgrade to any CNC machine, I think. It's very useful, it looks great, but it's actually very useful. You can clearly see what's going on without any additional external light. And again, it took me like, I don't know, 10 minutes to add this thing. It's great, I love this light. Okay, so that's it for the upgrades. I also wanted to add the very obvious addition to any CNC machine. That is the dust shoe, but my design is unfortunately not ready yet and I don't want to rush through it just to add it to this video. So I will spend more time on the design of the dust shoe. Uh, I will most likely make a separate video about that because I want to create kind of a universal dust shoe for 500 watt spindle because I think right now it is quite popular. So I will make a video about that. I am also waiting for a new vacuum cleaner just for the CNC machine, slightly more powerful than what I have been using. Um, so that's it. I hope you liked those upgrades. If you have any idea on what else I can add or 
just want to say whatever, leave them in the comments, you can find all the useful links in the description. Uh, if you need more info on my CNC machine, you can check out my other videos. And that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching, happy making, bye!